We find that some of the most underutilized tools in golf simulators are swing cameras. So when I started at Carl's Place, I did not like to golf. I could not hit a ball straight. I could not hit a ball 10 feet to save my life. And one of the things that helped me improve the fastest, in my opinion, was not only just access to a golf simulator, but access to um, being able to see myself swinging and visually see what I was doing wrong and then being able to make corrections uh, after the fact. And I, that's the huge benefit that you get from using um, swing cameras like this. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Carl's Play swing cameras with your golf simulator setup. Now there's actually free software out there that allows you to use cameras like these um, with any simulator. These cameras capture multiple different frame rates, including 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second, up to 260 frames per second. The benefits of having these cameras in your golf simulator is to have that outside look in and to be able to observe your swing and make those critical adjustments that you need to further improve your game. So we found this free software uh, that we really like. It's called Kinovia. So we're gonna head over to our enclosure right now with Mike and we're gonna test out these cameras and show you how they work with the Kinovia software. So Mike and I are in the enclosure today and we're gonna be walking you through how to use the swing cameras with the Kinovia software and then also be using that with your SkyTrack, uh, Mevo, Garmin, whatever launch monitor uh, software you're using. Um, and we'll kind of walk you through those steps and show you the benefits of being able to use these cameras um, while you practice your swing. So first off, we're gonna have SkyTrack and uh, Kinovia open, and then we're gonna go down and search for extend displays. And then we're gonna scroll down here to extend these displays. All right, so then uh, you can have whatever software um, you want on your projected screen and then the other software on the monitor. And for this, we're gonna do the SkyTrack on the projected screen and then we'll do the Kinovia software on our monitor here. All right, so we're gonna go down here and open our Kinovia software. So this is what the program will look like when you first open it up. Uh, you can see we have some capture history here from uh, some videos we recorded. And sometimes media will show up here um, from your computer. Now you can do a lot with this software, but we're just going to walk you through the quick steps on how to get this running with your Carl's Place swing cameras. So first off, we're going to go to the two capture screens. And you'll see right away, uh, we just have two black screens um, with nothing showing on them. What you're gonna wanna do, um, if this tab isn't selected, you're gonna wanna select this tab. It kinda looks like a camera icon. We're gonna select that tab. You're gonna click this window, and then you're gonna go over to the HD USB cameras that are located in your cameras section. And you'll double click, and now our camera is showing up here. So you can see that our image right now is inverted. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to go to image, image rotation. And so you can simply turn that image as needed to fit the window. So now that you've got your camera up and running, down here, this tab, configure camera, it kinda of looks like a little tool. So that tool icon, um, is where you select to change your settings on frame rate and image size. So the 640 um, by 360, that's gonna be your 260 frames per second frame rate. So that's the slowest motion you can get. 1280 by 720 is at 120 frames per second. And then the 1920 by 1080 is at 60 frames per second. So if you apply this, you can see um, the difference in quality once this is uh, focused here, you can see the quality difference is pretty substantial between the 1920 by 1080 and the 640 by uh, 360. That being said, you don't get near as much slow motion in that frame rate data, which is why 
when using this, most people will be using the 640 by 360, um, which is the 260 frames per second. The 260 frames per second is really where you're gonna get the most value out of uh, the data from your swing because it's capturing a lot more information in terms of frame rate. So we'll apply. So we have a laser projector. Um, and why you're seeing this crazy uh, flashing and color banding on the screen is because when that laser projector is writing its image, it's moving hundreds of times a second over the screen. It's not visible to your eye, but the camera, when it's capturing at 260 frames per second, is capturing that. If you don't have a laser projector, you probably won't have this issue, um, but it, that is something to note. But you can see if I change this to uh, 1280 by 720, um, that banding really changes. So if you're seeing that, don't be worried or anything. There's nothing wrong with your camera. Um, it's just the refresh rate from your projector isn't quite matching up with the frame rate from your USB camera. Down here is your delay. If you want your recording to start a certain period of time after you press the record button, you can just set this to a certain uh, specified amount of time. That can be handy if you're just operating this by yourself and uh, you want to give yourself a little time to get to the mat or whatever. These are record buttons, um, your save image buttons that just export it, exports an image. Down here is the joint controls so when you have two cameras running uh, you can just click this button and it'll automatically record both cameras at the same time. So once you make a recording you'll see right here it pops up and then I'll show in your capture history. So we'll have Mike start taking hits here. And we'll show you how these cameras work. So what you want to do from here after you've made your recording, and we've already made a couple in advance with Mike, um, you're going to go to your two playback screens or single playback screen. So we'll go over here to the two playback screens. And now again, empty windows. All you need to do here is take your, drag your captured video and bring it over to one of these windows. Um, so we're going to do uh, a couple captures that we've done earlier and we're going to drag these over. You can see I've already made some marks on these and I've already set some working zones but we'll kind of talk all through that here. And so one of the cool things about the software is you can set uh, work zones. So if you want to just hit record and then for you know 10 minutes or so just keep hitting then you can stop recording and then you have a really long video that you can make in and out points and working areas and export just the swings. So say we want to start a video right when he starts swinging. So we'll move our playhead here. We'll put this little green bracket looking icon. We'll select that. That's going to be the start of our video. And then we'll scroll to uh, after the hit here and we'll click the end parentheses bracket and then it's going to run and now we have a video that's just the length of our swing you can see that's represented in this green work zone right here so a really cool feature of this software is that uh, it allows you this percentage the speed percentage down here um, and so what this slider allows is it uh, slows the playback of each frame down um, so we can actually really get in here and slow down that movement even further. It's not adding frames necessarily but it's giving your brain a little more time to process um, where everything's going which I find super handy and we can speed that up too. You can also export your video with this feature on um, which is something that a lot of other programs don't offer. So this here is your tools tab for drawing, making notes. What I like for this angle is uh, using, it's got an angle, angle measurement tool. Um, so you can draw your angle out here. Um, 
get a measurement from that. It just gives you a measurement based off of what you draw. And then from there, um, you know, you can play through your video and uh, see where the angle was at the strike and, and just see, okay, so that's about 150-ish. And here's 160, so we straightened out a little bit. It's nice to be able to use these tools to actually see the metrics in what you're doing so you can actually um, come back to these and, and view your performance and how it's changing. Anytime you use it, make a drawing or make an annotation on your video, uh, it'll show up in the tabs here and you can click if you want to make comments. Um, to delete these, you just simply click this X. Um, on this view, you know, you can, you got lines that you can use to draw, um, you know, whether you want to, you know, check hip placement or you want to make sure your head isn't moving. You've got uh, circles. Um, these little arrow tabs in the corners means there's more tools. If you just hold down and click, there's more tools available underneath these tabs. Once you made your notes or um, made your drawings, um, you can then export your videos by going down here and there's a tab for export video. There's export a slideshow from key images and there's export a video with a pause on each key image. Those key images, um, you can make a key image right here just by clicking. So anytime you add an annotation or drawing, um, that's, it sees that as a uh, key image. And so you can export those with your video. So when you export a video, you can choose uh, take slow motion into account. And so what that is, is that's that speed um, controller right here that you see. That's something that the software is doing internally that doesn't necessarily have to do with your camera. Um, so that's a cool feature. You can export your video with that extra uh, slow motion, in a sense, added on. Also, when you set in and out points on your video, your video will only export that working zone. It won't export the whole 10 minute clip. So that's also really handy um, to not have to work with the giant files. So that's kind of the basics of running the software. Um, there's a lot more you can do with this and there's other tutorials online that you can find. Thanks to Kinovia for making this software free and, um, and I'll have a link in the description below here to their website and uh, they have a Patreon too that you can support. I recommend supporting that um, because they did great work with the software and they continue to do updates. Um, so I highly recommend doing that. So as you can see, these uh, cameras can be a really powerful tool um, when used to help improve your golf game. Check out the link in the description below to purchase these cameras on our website. Thanks again for watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. As always, remember to subscribe to our channel for more content on building your own golf simulator setup.